Let's review the techniques associated with while loops, shift registers, and feedback nodes. I'll begin by creating a new LabVIEW project and I'm also specifying a FPGA target board. And then within that target, I'll create a new VI. And this guarantees that I'm using the palette set associated with an FPGA target. Now all of our digital circuits always reside inside of a while loop. If you want to add a memory device, we can place that on the periphery of the while loop and then we define the data type by applying the initializer value. So we have Q on the left side and D on the right side. And this is for a single discrete flip-flop. You can also implement this with the feedback node and change the direction to give us the standard orientation for the flip-flop. And in this case, the data type is connected directly to the initializer terminal. Let me go ahead and add one more of these. And I'll initialize this to the same value as before. I'd like to point out that supposing you had one of these and you decided you, you wanted to switch to the feedback node form. Okay, that's easily done. And you'll see as you move that around, the initializer terminal follows it. So they're always lined up horizontally. So it's nice to have that out of the way. Sometimes you, when you have a bunch of these on the diagram, it might be difficult to track down the initializer terminal. if you just look very carefully directly to the left you'll find it but that's kind of handy you can if you notice again when you say show initializer that will blink that and give you the heads up on where it's located when you want to make use of previous iterations of the while loop giving you the traditional shift register form that's easily done. Again, note that we have actually only a single shift register that's been added, but then we can expose more terminals to indicate previous addition or previous iterations. Now, if you change the data type, say we want to change it to a numeric constant in this case, let's use an unsigned 8-bit integer here. You'll notice that the feedback node and initializer terminal all take on the same co characteristic color of the integer. I'm going to go ahead and stick down one more shift register so that I can illustrate how you set up an array constant. So you first put down the framework for an array and then drop in a constant that has the, the data type that you want. Now it's important to remember that in LabVIEW FPGA, all of your array constants always have to be set to a fixed size. If you forget to do that, you'll be reminded later on when you try to run the VI. So this way I can expose the eight constants all at once select my desired pattern, and now I've got a shift register that's based on an 8-bit bus. If you like, you can disable the display of the index display. It makes the array constant look a little bit cleaner. Now as far as the iterator control is concerned, you can select create a constant, and typically that's the way you would set up a circuit, is that it's perpetually operating as an infinite loop. 
If you like, you can set this up nicely to create a control on your front panel. So that way, if you like, you can have the FPGA target stop at some point just by pressing that stop button. As far as pacing the loop is concerned, you can put down the weight express sub VI and you can select whether or not you want that in clock ticks, microseconds, or milliseconds. You can then pick the width of the counter that keeps track of that particular unit that you've selected. So this way I can have a control in the front panel that allows me to vary the pacing of the loop. Now this version of the while loop always takes some number of clock cycles to operate and especially with the loop pacing in there it will take many clock cycles. If we're looking for a loop that can operate or basically uh, uh, execute its sub diagram in one clock cycle, we do it with a single cycle timed loop. Now when you do that, you'd have to take out this construct that would suggest that we have multiple clock cycles going. So this is now executing at 50 megahertz on either the Xilinx FPGA board or the NI Digital Electronics FPGA board. This is another place to find that loop, by the way.